the Lord this morning. Who's feeling the Holy Ghost in the house of the Lord? Let's all stand for a moment. Just lift up our voices unto the Lord one more time. The anointing of God is so strong right now. I can hardly stand. <laughs> Come on, let's praise Him. Father, God, we lift up our voices. God, we lift up our hearts. Father, we lift up our voices, O Lord, in one accord, giving you the praise, O Lord, and the honor, O God. Those of you Lord, that is so due unto your name. You just to go Father, we pray the anointing of, of God. Lord, we continue Aren't throughout this service, us in, prayer right in this where you're lesson, right now. and God, in the sermon this morning by Brother Bishop, we pray, oh God, you'll anoint and you will bless and you will use every teacher of the Word of God in this assembly. And we pray, God, your will to be done in all things. We ask you to bless every brother and sister, and we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. Go ahead and clap your hands unto the Lord. Somebody shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Woo! Man, I feel the power of the Lord here this morning. Thank God he's great and greatly to be praised. David said, marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. I believe I'm looking at the marvelous works of God this morning, Pastor Hunt. God's brought you out of a world of sin, cleansed you up, filled you with the Holy Ghost. You've been baptized in his name. Come on now. He's put a song in your heart. Come on now. A spring in your step. Oh, thank God you are a marvelous work this morning. Do you love him? Now, I'm going to try to slow this down. I told the pastor, I'm going to slow it down. I'm going to break it down. But I'm not going to hinder the anointing of God. God moves on me to come out here and pray for you. I'm going to do it. I want the Holy Ghost to have his way. I believe God knows what he's doing. Amen. Praise the Lord. We want our good brothers here to, uh, Brother Terry, go and lift up that voice and pray. God's blessing on the gift of the giver. Ah. name. Turn to your neighbor and say it's good to be in the adult Bible class this morning. <laughs> and God bless you. You can be seated in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. And thank God I'm excited about this lesson and I appreciate Pastor Hunt asking me to teach and he felt the Holy Ghost and spoke to him in front of the church a few weeks ago and had me to teach on some of the basic fundamental truths that you and I hold dearly this morning. I call them cardinal truths. So I jotted down some things. My wife beautifully typed it up and some of the papers are up here and I simply called it this. Well, call you Bill First Pentecostal Church, the still standing class, which is 36 years old and above. And I put this, three cardinal truths for October 2017. And today, October the 1st, for a header, I had her type up the gift of the Holy Ghost. And I ask, what is the Holy Ghost? A. B. Who can receive the Holy Ghost? Did only the apostles receive it in Acts 2? We're going to look at these examples in Acts 2, 8, 10, and 19 in a few minutes this morning. Then in C, I ask, when is the Spirit received? Some say it's received the moment you accept Jesus as your personal Savior. But I want to tell you this morning, He's not your personal Savior. He's the Savior of the world saved us all the same way. I understand what they mean. Individually, he deals with us, but still, he's the savior of the world. Amen. Then I asked D, or I spoke of this, the baptism with 
the Holy Ghost. So we're going to look at some of these things this morning. And as always, we want to acknowledge those who are with us by the way of our website. We pray In case God's you didn't know it, we've already started. The Holy Ghost has already started. Uh, if you came here for a church service, that's not what we're having. We're having an apostolic time of worship and prayer. And uh, we'll move on in just a little bit. But right now, we invite you just to join us in prayer. You can kneel right where you're at. You can sit. You can come to the altar. This is not anything formal. We're just here to worship God and see what the Holy Ghost is going to do, all right? Thank you for all of you that have come. Let's join with the choir and just begin to pray and begin to worship tonight. I came out of the fire by the grace of God, and I want to keep on going for the Lord. You feel that way. Somebody clap your hands unto the Lord God. I feel the power of the Lord here this morning. Let's get our hearts and our minds ready for the Lord. And aren't you thankful God is a gift? Thank you, Jesus. God. Thank you, Jesus. So the title is, is Thank simply you, Lord. Thank the you, Lord. gift. Hallelujah. Everyone say the gift of the Holy Jesus. Ghost. Aren't you thankful as the writer of the Hebrews said in Hebrews chapter 6, I believe it is, he said this, or, or well, I think it's chapter 3, but nevertheless, he said that you have tasted of the, everyone say heavenly gift, and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. Just think when God filled you with the Holy Ghost, he gave you a taste of the powers of the world to come. He gave you that heavenly gift. And I'm thankful this morning he gives the Holy Ghost, sister, to them that obey him. He gives the Holy Spirit, the Praise heavenly God. Father does, to them that ask him. So this morning before you leave this adult Bible class, if you'll repent of your sins and you'll ask God Praise Almighty God. in the name of Jesus, he will fill you with the Holy Ghost in this building today. Do you believe that? Well, go ahead and clap together. your hand. I'm going to go ahead and go how the Holy Ghost leads this morning. Where you're Blessed this is be the name of the Lord. All right. And Let's Paul, just enter into a spirit a of prayer and worship. Let's we'll make sure our hearts and our minds are prepared tonight for what God wants to do, okay? In 2 Corinthians 9, All right, can we do that? Paul wherever you, wherever you feel comfortable, if you want to stand, if you want to walk, if you want to kneal, if you want to come down to the front, it doesn't matter, but let's pray together. God Father, we love you tonight. Life we thank you for your presence Jesus that is already Christ here, God. Lord. We know that where two God or three are gathered in your God. name, that you're already Terry, there in the midst of them, the Father. Ghost, we've got many more than that here tonight. God, we thank you right now for what you're going to do in this place. Say, what is earnest? It God, is we didn't come here with any agenda. Deposit. God, with any it is like particular schedule, Lord, we just want to when wait you on your presence. We just want to, some money, you God, experience your glory and your power tonight. We want to be changed God, in your presence God tonight, God. You with the Holy Ghost, We thank you, Lord you Jesus, for all that you're doing in our lives, in our families, in this he church, gave you the God, in this city, as it in were, this state, of in this the nation, Lord. Right now, we give you glory and honor and praise, Jesus, for who you are, for what you're doing, God. Reserved you are a mighty you, God. There is no the one like you, Lord God, through faith unto There salvation. is none like you, God. I thank God the Holy Ghost you are the one true living God, and we're so thankful to know your name, to come. The, the precious name of, of Jesus that we can call on in, other words, God's in times got a of lot trouble, more Lord, in so times of sickness. On the other side. God, in times the Holy of confusion, Ghost we can lift our voices and Somebody liken it to an engagement ring. But thank God one day there's going to be a marriage supper of the Lamb. And by the grace of God, Brother England, I'm going to be in it. How about you? Go ahead and lift up your hands and give him praise. Whoo, glory. Ah, he's a gift-giving God. James said this. Again, I'm laying a big foundation. He said, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Brother Terry, when God filled me with the Holy Ghost when I was 21, 38 years ago, God gave me the greatest gift that he could ever give me. It was eternal life through Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. And I'm thankful for that. Brother Hunt, you preached something not long ago. I've got here in my scribbly notes. I like what you said. You said something along these lines, between Calvary and Pentecost. <clears throat> I agree with what you said. You've, you've, you've said it twice from the pulpit. You're right on. In John 20, 22, when Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost, they did not receive the Holy Ghost that moment. If they did, well, only 11 of them was there. 
Amen. And then Matthias would later be added, but I believe the church is built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. I believe all the apostles. But listen, the Bible says the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Now, I know he had been resurrected and glorified at that time, but in Acts 2.33, he had to ascend up. The Bible said he's sitting on the right hand of God and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this which ye now see and hear. So he had to not only die, be buried, resurrected, be glorified, and ascend up on high. That had to take place, brother, before the Holy Ghost could be given. Amen. But aren't you thankful today he is glorified? He is sitting on high, and thank God he's still shedding forth the Holy Ghost. Thank God he's still pouring out of his spirit these last days. And oh, I'm full of the anointing of God this morning. Somebody say, praise the Lord. And, and Pastor, I'm going to have to eat some crow. I said, I'm not going to get all excited. I'm going to break it down. But the anointing of God is in this place today. Do you love him? One more time, clap your hands unto the one true God <coughs> and eternal life. Blessed be the Lord. I have a book by old oh, brother Kenneth Reeves, and I like what he said. He said, Calvary is for sinners in sin. He's talking about Calvary and Pentecost. But the Holy Ghost is for God's friends. Listen slowly. God does not give the Holy Ghost to the world. They can't receive it. God does not. You cannot go to Pentecost before you go to Calvary. You cannot receive the Holy Ghost until you go to that bloody, cruel cross of Calvary and you repent of your sins. God forgives you. God reconciles you. He makes you his friend, as Brother Reeves said. I agree with it. And it's upon his friends that he confers the gift of the Holy Ghost. You say, Brother Blanton, are you saying we get saved and later we receive the Holy Ghost? I'm not saying that at all. Are you saying, Brother Blanton's the... Holy Ghost baptism is something subsequent to salvation? Not at all. But you've got to come to Calvary before you go to Pentecost. And it doesn't take 50 days or five years or two or three hours. As soon as you hit the altar and you repent of your sins and God reconciles you, he forgives you, you can be a recipient of the gift of the Holy Ghost that he gives to his friends. It doesn't take hours. The Apostle Peter preaching to the, I got chill bumps all over me. Apostle Peter, Brother Paul preaching to Cornelius. While he's preaching, they're repenting. You say, well, the Bible doesn't say it in Acts 10, but in Acts 11, the Bible says God granted unto the Gentiles repentance unto life. So in other words, they visited Calvary, Pastor Hunt, while Peter was preaching. They were forgiven and reconciled in moments. And then what happened? While Peter yet spake these words, Ah, oh, the Holy Ghost fell on all them that heard the word, and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter. Why? Because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then they prayed him to tarry certain days. We want to hear more, Peter, about Jesus. Stay with us for a while. People say in Acts 2 was the only time the Holy Ghost was poured out on 12 apostles. I'm going to set that straight in a moment here. But the Bible says in Acts 10 on the Gentile, the gift of the Holy Ghost was what? poured out upon them. Peter said they received it just like we did. It came on them just like on us. In chapter 10, chapter 11, you can find the wording. In other words, God poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost on the Gentiles while I was speaking. He's telling these men in Jerusalem that withstood him for going down to the Gentile. Aren't you thankful Gentiles can receive the Holy Ghost? Jews can receive it. Male, female, bond free. Well, some say only the 12 apostles received the Holy Ghost. I still can't figure out which one were the women. Well, the Bible said this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. I'm getting ahead of myself, but here I go. 
God said, you'll pour out of my spirit upon all flesh in the last days. He said, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will in those days pour out of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Thank God it's for whosoever will. It's for all flesh. But I like Brother Reese, what he said. And I agree with you again, Pastor. He had to be glorified, which he was, but he had to also ascend up, Acts 2.33, if you're taking notes, and receive of the Father. And I'm going to get on to Godhead later this month. The Father's not two men. Jesus didn't come up and say, Father, give me the Holy Ghost. The Father's the eternal spirit. But we'll look at that later. That's another lesson to come. But here's some things I wrote down. I believe there's times we, for, we pray in the altar for people to have the Pentecostal experience who has not yet gone to Calvary. Amen. And I want to say this. It's not reproof. It applies to me and to all of us. Just because you feel God does not mean you're right with God. Music may move you, or it may be a true uh, feeling of the Holy Ghost moving you, but just because you feel God does not mean you're right with Him. But I'll say this, if you are right with him, you're going to feel God. And I've seen people in services, and I have to admit, I don't run and shout like I used to. I've got old, but sometimes we make excuses. But I've seen people in churches that seem like nothing moves them. It doesn't matter how anointed Brother Hunt is or Brother Blanton is or other ministers. It doesn't matter how powerful a move of God. They'll sit there and look at you like they've never been in a Pentecostal service before. That's dangerous. You can be past feeling. You're hardening yourself. Maybe not intentionally, but you're hardening yourself. Who wants to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost? Pastor, the Bible says to quench not the Spirit, despise not prophesying. I believe he didn't let the Holy Ghost have his way in our church services. Do you believe that? I'm laying a huge foundation. You can receive the Holy Ghost after or before water baptism, as we'll see, but you'll never receive it before you come to the cross of Calvary. In Acts 8, Simon the sorcerer, he believed the things the evangelist Philip had preached. The Bible says he believed, and he was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. But when the apostles heard that they had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John, brother man, they come down pray for them to receive the Holy Ghost, for as yet... He was fallen upon none of them, only were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. But when pa Simon saw that through the laying on of the hands of the apostle, the Holy Ghost was given, he took out his billfold, so to speak, and said, give me this power. I want to buy it, that I can lay hands on people and they'll receive the Holy Ghost. Make a long story short, Peter rebuked him, said, your heart's not right in the sight of God, buddy. You need to repent. Could it be that people that you talked about the other day, Pastor, they get baptized and they still hadn't been to Calvary? If you've not truly repented of your sins, God has not forgiven you. Amen. But let's look at this. Years ago, a lady asked me, Brother Brad, what is the Holy Ghost? And she was a pastor's wife. Now, it was a Pentecostal holiness, as they called themselves, a Trinitarian Pentecostal branch, if you want to call it that. But she said, Brother Brad, what is the Holy Ghost? And that, it, it kind of shocked me. It, it threw me back. Surely, people that are in some form of Pentecost would know what or who the Holy Ghost is. So let's look at this for a moment. I've got something for Brother John Patterson's book I want to read to you in a moment. We know that God is a spirit, John 4, 24. And I just quoted it in part, how in the last days he would pour out of his spirit upon all people, all flesh. So the Holy Ghost, Brother White, is not a separate spirit. It's not a separate person. It's not a separate God in the Godhead. God, who is a spirit, said, I will pour out of my spirit. So the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost, and I'll get into that word in a little while, is I'll use the word a measure of the presence of the omnipresent God that he pours out upon us abundantly through our Savior, Jesus Christ. The Bible says the spirit of truth proceedeth from the Father. 
Now, brother, man, that doesn't mean the father, like I said a moment ago, is six feet tall, and he taps the Holy Ghost on, on the shoulder and says, Holy Ghost. No. God is the Father. God is a spirit, so the Father is the spirit. That's how Jesus could say the Father's in me, he's in heaven, he's in the prayer closet with millions of people, and he's above all, through all, and in you all. So the Father is the omnipresent spirit because God is the spirit, he is the Father. And the Father was in the Son. I'm getting on the Godhead for a moment. And yet he was in heaven at the same time. So the Holy Ghost, or the Spirit of truth, the Comforter, proceedeth from the Father, that is from God, the eternal Spirit. He pours out of His Spirit. He sends forth His Spirit upon all flesh through our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we receive the Holy Ghost through Christ, how do I word this? God's presence has been tempered with the feelings of, and I'll use the word, the infirmities and the humanity of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, the same Spirit of God that was in Christ is received through Christ and now dwelleth in us. That's how the Holy Ghost can understand what we go through, can groan and intercede through us, can feel and identify with what we go through because the Spirit of God was in Christ, the suffering Messiah, and now is sent to dwell in you and I as the abiding comforter, the seal unto the day of redemption. And not just to identify with our, with our infirmities, our weakness, our humanity, but thank God that same Spirit that was in the suffering Messiah, oh, God's given me this as I'm speaking, Brother Ricky, God gave him power, raised him from the dead, and glorified him. Thank God we've got the power of the resurrection in us by the gift of the Holy Ghost of God. Amen. Here's what Brother Patterson said in his book. 1964, a man who lived in Canada. I don't agree with everything he said. I say it respectfully, but here's some things that I, I cut out and I taped on my notes. The basic truth underlying the doctrine of the comforter is found in John 7, 39. For the Spirit was not yet. Now, the word given is in italics. It is put there by the translators not in the original text. Here's what he said. Because Jesus had not yet been glorified. Here's what he says. The use of the italics in the King James and English Revised Versions is a frank admission, or you're acknowledging that the word given has no place in the Greek text. The Spirit was not yet. Now, he's not saying this, and I'm not saying that the Holy Ghost didn't exist. God is a spirit. His spirit moved on the, on the waters and moved all upon the prophets of old. But in this office as the, and this manifestation of God's spirit as the comforter was not yet until Jesus had gone through all the sufferings that I just touched on was resurrected, glorified, and ascended up on high. Now the Holy Ghost has been given to all people that are receive it. In other words, prior to God being in Christ, he really didn't feel and could not really identify with the things that you and I go through until he was manifest in flesh in Christ. Do you follow me? Now his spirit is received through Jesus. So that office was not yet, not that the Spirit didn't exist, not saying that at all, but that office as the abiding comforter was not yet. Here's what he says. In other words, this peculiar manifestation of God as the comforter did not and could not exist until Jesus ascended on high. Here's what he said also. But I do say that the manifestation of God as the abiding comforter was utterly impossible until Jesus was glorified, and this because of the very nature of the comforter. For the Scriptures teach that He proceeds from the Father and the Son. 
the Holy Ghost proceeds from the Father, but the Bible said Jesus, having received of the, of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, He has shed forth this. So the Comforter comes from the Father and the Son, really from the Father through the Son. And here's what He says, I hurry along, thereby combining, combining almighty power with mediatorial grace. Brother Patterson said, we seldom stop to consider that this precious comforter is peculiar to the present dispensation because of his very nature. We do not realize that he is indeed the ever-living almighty God, but tempered, so to speak, by the feelings of Christ's humanity that the very flesh and blood of Jesus with all his life of vicarious sufferings and now priestly mediation have been combined with resurrection life and sent to dwell in us. And I'll say this and move along. Here's what he says. If we, the baptized people of God, the Holy Ghost baptized people of God, realize this, do you realize who you feel up here? Holy Ghost is not just some feeling. Either this is the Spirit of God Almighty who created the moon, the sun, the millions of stars in whom we live and move and have our being. He's the Almighty God or we're all foolish people. And if this is God Almighty, we need to walk more softly before Him. Here's what he goes on to say. He says, if we, the baptized people of God, realize this, surely we would walk more softly before our God. But many times we come here, we feel God's power. People go back out and live in the same ungodly life that they live. Do the same thing. Feel the presence of the eternal spirit and go right back out and live the same filthy, dirty, ungodly life. Again, pastor, you got to go to Calvary before you get to Pentecost. And again, because you feel God does not mean you're right with God. But again, I'll reiterate, if you are right with God, thank God we can feel the presence of the Almighty God. Amen. Thank God He inhabits the praises of His people. Why don't you go ahead and lift up your hands and praise Him and clap your hands unto God. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Thank God He's great and greatly to be praised. David said, marvelous are your works. Marvelous are your works. So let's look now. I've got 20 minutes. I'm just getting started. Let's look at four words, the gift of the Holy Ghost. Everyone say gift. Everyone say baptize, baptism of the Holy Ghost. Everyone say filled with the Holy Ghost. And everyone say the promise of the Holy Ghost. All four of these words are talking about the one and self same experience of being filled with the spirit of the omnipresent God. When he fills your body to overflowing with his presence. And we're going to let Scripture interpret Scripture as we do this. If you would go to Matthew chapter 3 and verse 11, Sister Shackelford, you can put that on the board. Now, a lot of people say only the 12 apostles received the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 2. But if you'll notice here in Matthew 3, Mark 1, Luke 3, and John 1, 31, 31. But here in Matthew 3, 11, we find John the Baptist coming on the scene, Brother Turner. And he's to prepare the way of the Lord God, Jehovah, or Yahweh. But isn't it amazing the one that he goes before was Jesus? Brother England, Isaiah 40 was prophesied that John the Baptist would prepare the way for the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. When you see Lord in all uppercase letters 6,823 times, it's put there by the translators in the place of our Bible would render it Jehovah. Some say it should be Yahweh, Jah, or Yah. But isn't it amazing, when, again, when John the Baptist goes forth, He's preparing the way for God Almighty that all flesh would see the salvation of the Lord. The one that he prepares the way for was none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. John said of Christ that he is mightier than I. John said, I'm not worthy to, to bend down and to untie his shoe or loose the latchet of his sandal. John said, the one that's coming after me is preferred before me. Why is that? Because John said he was before me. And John the Baptist was six months older than Christ, according to the flesh. 
So how is it, Brother Terry, that Jesus existed before John the Baptist? How is it that he said before Abraham was, I am? Jesus is the eternal spirit. He is God Almighty. Come on, he's El El Yon. He's El Shaddai. He's Jehovah God. He's Yahweh. Come on now. He's the one true God, the creator of the universe. And John said, I'm not worthy to bend down and to take his shoes off his feet, as it were. He's greater than I. And John preached to multitudes, Sister Lisa, thousands and thousands of men and women came to hear him. It wasn't just the 12 apostles. What did he tell them, Sister Turner? He baptized them, his disciples. He said, I indeed immerse you with water. I indeed baptize you in water or with water under repentance. Thousands and thousands of men and women, the whole region, all that area came to John the Baptist, and he told them when he baptized them, there's one coming after me. I have immersed you in this water, but he's going to immerse you in the Holy Ghost. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. He wasn't talking to the 12 apostles. He was talking to everyone. <clears throat> Thank God it's for the black folks, for the white folks, for the red folks, the brown folks, the yellow folks, the male, the female, the bond, the free, Jew and Gentile. Whosoever will, let him come and receive and drink of the water of life freely. Glory. Thank God the Holy Ghost is for all flesh. Was it for 12 apostles? <clears throat> Man, it's powerful. Look in Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. You can put it on the board if you would, Sister Shackleford and Brother. I, I should have made this a two-part series. In Acts chapter 1, verse 4, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. Everyone say, but wait for the promise. And I'm going to go ahead and clarify something. You're not waiting on the promise anymore. There's no such teaching as tarrying for the Holy Ghost. You say, well, Brother Blanton, the Bible said they were to tarry. That was because God had appointed a, a day that he was going to begin this Holy Ghost outpouring in the last days, and it was found on the day of Pentecost, the Feast of Weeks, in Acts chapter 2. But thank God, my friend, the Holy Ghost is given. Today is the day of salvation. Oh, come on. Again, I can quote it. I can be teaching now, and you can just lift up your voice and praise God, repent of your sins, and God will fill you with the Holy Ghost in an adult Bible class in Collierville First Pentecostal Church. Today's the day of salvation. While well, Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them. Glory. Oh, I'm under the anointing of God this morning. <clears throat> Brother, the Bible said he pours it out. He sheds it. I said, shed, that's a strange word. I looked it up. You know what shed means? To pour out. Have you ever shed tears? It fell on them. It was falling on them. It came upon them. And as a black man, I, you heard me say it, named Smiley Barr. He had no teeth. I used to work with him years ago. He got to go into a black holiness Baptist church, Brother Wong. And that man got filled with the Holy Ghost in that Baptist church, came back to the to the place of employment, would cry and, and shake and rub his hands together talking about the goodness of God. One Monday morning, he was so excited, he said, man, he was serious. He was a simple man. He said, man, he said, the Holy Ghost, he said, jumped on me. Who wants the omnipresent spirit to flat foot you this morning, to jump on you, to be poured out upon you? Oh, let the Holy Ghost be shed forth. We need to take down our umbrellas and let the power and the presence of God fall upon us. <clears throat> but look what it says. So they're waiting because there's an appointed time. Everyone, everyone say, for the promise. The promise of the Father, which saith he, you've heard of me. Verse 5, now he's going to tell them what the promise of the Father is. It's the Holy Ghost baptism. What happened in Acts 2, we'll see in a moment. When God poured out his spirit, that is the Holy Ghost baptism. For John the Baptist, he truly baptized with water. He was the baptizer. But ye shall be baptized. When say baptized. Now, wait a minute, Lord. You just said in verse 4 it was a promise. Now, in verse 5, you're saying it's a baptism with or in the Holy Ghost not many days from now. Some say seven days, some say ten. 
So now turn to Acts 2, verses 1 through 4. So now we're going to look and we're going to see what took place when about 120 men and women, according to Acts 1, you can research it, they're going to Jerusalem and they're going to wait, they're going to tarry for the promise of the Father, which is none other than the Holy Ghost baptism, speaking with tongues. Amen. The Bible says that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were what? They were all with one accord in one place. Verse 2, everyone saying, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. You can receive the Holy Ghost while you're sitting down. You can receive the Holy Ghost standing up. There was a man received the Holy Ghost driving down Interstate 55, Brother Griffith, speaking in tongues, driving an 18-wheeler. The man that converted me to God 38 years ago used to work at the Memphis City Zoo. I know I'm going to, I'm fast. I need about another hour. He and a buddy of his or co-worker were cleaning out the, the lion's dens. Of course, the lions weren't in there, you know. And he prayed for that man in that lion's den. And Brother Gene Reddick said, God filled that man with the Holy Ghost in the lion's den in the Memphis City Zoo, friend. You're not waiting on God. He's waiting on you. Day's the day of salvation. We're not tarrying on God. God's saying, come unto me, all ye that are laboring, heavy laden, and I will give you rest. If you're thirsty, come and drink of the water of life freely. God's waiting on you. Oh, man, give me two more hours. Where was it? Verse 3. So they're waiting for the promise, Brother White, of the Father, the Holy Ghost baptism. And there appeared on them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat. Who wants the Holy Ghost tongues to sit on you? It rested on them. On each of them. Verse 4. Listen. And they were all, everyone say filled. Wait a minute, Luke, you're contradicting yourself, buddy, because you said it was a promise. You said it was a Holy Ghost baptism. Now you're saying it is the gift of the Spirit, or better yet, excuse me, they're filled with the Holy Ghost. I'll get on the gift in a minute. And begin to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Let's look at it. And then later, we're going to see in verse 33, verses 38 and 39, again, it's a promise and it is the gift, Acts 2, 38. What does all that mean? It means this. God promises the Holy Ghost to them that will repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. It is a promise. You may receive it before baptism or after, but again, you've got to go to the cross first. It is a promise. God gives the Holy Ghost to them that obey him, sister, Acts 5.32. If you obey God in repentance, he'll give you the Holy Ghost, and you have to be baptized in Jesus' name. He gives the Holy Ghost to them that ask him. Amen? So it is a promise. It is a gift, Brother Terry, because you can't earn it. You can't buy it. Like I said in Acts 8, Simon could not buy it. You can try to labor for it. You're wasting your time until you come to the altar of repentance at Calvary and you have faith in God, you'll never receive the Holy Ghost. But once you repent, God reconciles you. You're his friend. He can fill you before you get off your knees. Somebody say amen. Brother, I'm in my zone today right now. The power of God is here so strong. It is an infilling. Here's what God showed me. I put in my little book. Take a glass, an empty glass, Brother Terry. How about a cup? David said, my cup runneth over. Take an empty cup, put it under the running faucet, turn that water on. The water pours on the cup. It fills the cup. Then what happens? It begins to overflow. So the infilling and the baptism is the one in self-same experience. The water, Brother Ricky, is in the cup, and the cup is in the water. It is an infilling. And it is an immersion, an overwhelming, a plunging, a baptizing in or with the Holy Ghost. And it, again, I say, is a gift because you can't earn it, you can't buy it. It's promised to them that obey the gospel in repentance and baptism. And God will then freely give you the gift when you get into the place where you can receive it. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Well, it's received the moment I believe in Jesus. No, it's not. Where do you get that at? Again, we're going to see in Acts. I've got eight minutes. We're going to see in Acts they received the Holy Ghost after baptism and before. 
They say, well, that's a separate experience. No, it's not. I'll get into that in a minute. Let me hurry. Look at verse 33 of Acts 2. Would you put that up there? Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted. Again, Brother Wong, he had to be glorified. He had to be exalted. And having received of the Father the, everyone say promise, of the Holy Ghost, he had, everyone say shed for. He has poured out this, which ye now see and hear. Sister White, I'm thankful that when I received the Holy Ghost and you received the Holy Ghost, something took place that people could see and hear. When a baby's born, something you can see and you can hear, sound, there's life there. And the Bible said, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. They heard them in Acts 2, declaring the wonderful works of God. What are you saying, Brother Bland? When you receive the Holy Ghost, something takes place that people can see and hear. You know what they saw? People acting like they were drunk. And it wasn't because the music was so loud. I don't think there's any music there. They, they were acting drunk. And they were speaking in tongues and languages. And again, they were magnifying God, declaring the wonderful works of God. They said, what meaneth this? These people are drunk. Peter said, oh, they're not drunken as you suppose. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out, again, of my spirit, a measure of God's spirit, upon everyone say all flesh, not just 12 apostles, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, young men shall see visions, old men shall dream dreams. On my servants and on my handmaidens, I will in those days pour out of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. So again, my question would be to the church of Christ. You say only the 12 apostles received the Holy Ghost. Which ones were women? Which ones were the daughters and the handmaidens of God? Because what took place in Acts 2, they were waiting for the promise, which is the Holy Ghost baptism, the Holy Ghost infilling, filling to overflowing, and it's this baptism that immerses you into the spirit-filled body of Christ. And we'll slow it down. Say this. Jesus, Sister Courtney, is the baptizer. Just like John baptized with or in water, Jesus is the heavenly baptizer, being both God and man. And he baptizes with or in the water of life. He baptizes with the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost is the medium with which or in which he baptizes. And it's in that one medium, that one spirit, that the one body of Christ, the church, consists. You can't be in the church and not have the Holy Ghost baptism. How do you think that Jesus dwells in you and I this morning? He dwells in us as the Holy Ghost. Now the Lord is that spirit. And Romans 8 and 9 says, Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. Doesn't mean he's not doing a work in your life, Brother Terry. Doesn't mean he's not dealing with people. But until you've repented, been baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost, you're none of his. That sounds like some of the talk we hear in the street. None of me. That wasn't none of me. But you're none of his. And so the only way that Jesus is in our midst, Sister Wong, where two or three are gathered together in my name, Jesus is the Holy Ghost. Not his physical body, but he's both God and man, Father and Son, deity and humanity. How else can he be with us? How else can Christ be in you, the hope of glory, if God, the Lord is not that spirit? He told his disciples, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. He came to them and asked who, Brother Ricky, and the power of the Holy Ghost. Are you thankful? You know who you feel here today? You feel the presence of the eternal God through our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. I say give him a hand clap of praise. Somebody shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Glory! Oh, we need to walk more softly before our God. We need to have knowledge of God. You say, I want to grow in God. Are you reading his Bible? You say, no, you're not going to grow in God. Acts 8, I'm hurrying. Now started in Jerusalem, 120 minutes, Mary, Mary was there. She received the Holy Ghost speaking with tongues. Jesus' brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, Judas, Judah, those four men received the Holy Ghost in Acts 2 speaking with tongues. About 120 names were there. It began there in Jerusalem. 
Now in Acts 8, Philip the evangelist, and I'm hurrying, goes down to the city of Samaria, Brother Terry. He preaches Christ unto them. Long story short, they repent of their sins, are baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, You've got to receive it. They sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen. Everyone say fallen. You want the Holy Ghost to fall on you, Brother Paul? Fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they, the apostles, then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. It wasn't received the moment they believed in Jesus. They had believed, repented, except for Simon, and were baptized. Then they received the Holy Ghost after water baptism. After. Some say, well, they didn't say they spoke in tongues. You know they did. Because when you receive it, something takes place you can see and hear. We'll see it in Acts 2, Acts 10, Acts 19. And Simon saw something, Brother Johnson, that impressed him more than seeing sick healed the lame walking, unclean spirits crying, coming out of many that were possessed. He saw something that caused him to take his billfold out. He saw something powerful. When they, lay, they laid their hands, Peter and John, the Holy Ghost came on them, Brother Wong. I believe they fell out and they acted drunk and they were speaking in tongues. And Simon said, give me this power. They didn't say, well, I accept, I'm not being that. I accept you, Jesus, as my personal Savior. <laughs> Salvation is deeper than that. Amen. Peter said, your money perish with you because you thought, everyone say, the gift of God. There's the word again. Interchangeably, promise, gift, baptized, feel, one in self same experience. Because you thought the gift of God, which was the Holy Ghost baptism, the infilling, the promise, the outpouring, you thought that could be purchased with money. Your heart's not right, buddy, in sight of God. You need to repent. You need to go to Calvary. Before you come to Pentecost, everyone say amen or oh me. Oh, I'm just getting, I got to hurry. I got two minutes. Acts 10, Brother England, now Peter, the man with the keys, not to the kingdom, but of the kingdom, he goes down to Cornelius. That's the Gentiles. I've already quoted it. We're going to see here these men and women receive the baptism with or in the Holy Ghost prior to water baptism. It wasn't received the moment everybody believes or always before baptism, both before and after. While, here I go again. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost, everyone say it fell. Who wants the Holy Ghost to fall in Collierville First Pentecostal Church? Go ahead and clap your hands unto the one God. Who wants to see miracles, signs, and wonders in the house of God? Come on now. Somebody give praise unto the Lord here this day. Blessed be the name. Who wants the Holy Ghost to fall on you, brother? To flat foot you. To jump on you, as Smiley Bar said. While Peter yet spake these words, while Brother Hunt is preaching, while Brother Bishop is giving his testimony, the Holy Ghost can fall in this place this Sunday morning. Clap your hands unto the Lord. Oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. As Brother Patton says, my, 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 my. I'll say, I love it, I love it, I love it. While Peter yet spake the, these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them. It wasn't the 12 apostles that heard the word. And they, the Jews that went with Peter, were astonished because that on the Gentiles also, everyone say, was poured out. Now, the Church of Christ say only one Holy Ghost outpouring. It was Acts 2. They need to read Acts 10. Because that on the Gentiles... Awfully. Also was poured out. Everyone say poured out. Everyone say the gift. Now what is the gift of the Holy? The baptism of the Holy Ghost. They're waiting for the promise to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. They're filled with it. And Peter said if you repent and be baptized in Jesus' name, God will give you the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto all. God shall call. So they received the same thing in Acts 10 as the Jews received in Acts 2. Give me, please give me two or three more moments. In Acts chapter 11, turn there if you will. Or go to Acts 11, Sister Shackelford. Because Peter's going to be withstood by the Jews saying, you went down to a Gentile's house. 
And here's what Peter testified to those Jewish brethren. As I begin to speak, while Peter yet spake these words, as I begin to speak, everyone say, the Holy Ghost fell. Brother, he fell on them. As on us, us who? Us Jews. The same way. At the beginning. When was the beginning? Acts chapter 2, when 120 men and women, Jews, are waiting for the promise of the Holy Ghost baptism, which is the gift and the infilling of the Spirit. Verse 16, fell on them. Then remembered I the word of the Lord. See how Scripture interprets Scripture. Brother White, it's the best commentary for Scripture is Scripture. It will support itself, interpret itself. But you know, Brother Zombic, my friend, it's like puzzle pieces. you got to take this piece and this piece, put it all together. If it applies to the su subject now, no matter what the subject, take every Scripture, put them together, and you'll get the complete picture. Amen. Then remember thou the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed, everyone say baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. What happened in Acts 10 was the Holy Ghost baptism. Next verse, verse 17. For as much then as God gave, it's a gift, them the, everyone say like gift. Friend, there's only one Holy Ghost. There used to be a man who said, they don't have the same Holy Ghost I've got. You better be careful, buddy, because they got the Holy Ghost. They had the same Holy Ghost you have. They may not be prayed up like you are maybe, but it's only one spirit. And for by one spirit, actually it means in one spirit, are we all baptized into one body. Gave them the like gift who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. What was I that I could withstand God? And then verse 19, I'm closing. I've gone over. Paul finds certain disciples, and he asked them, Brother Man, he said, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Now, if the Holy Ghost is received the moment you believe, why would he ask them that? And I've done show this after baptism in some places and before in others. But it has to follow true repentance. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? They said unto him, we've not so much heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. I don't think they were saying, we don't know there's such thing as the Holy Spirit. I don't think they knew it had been given. Well, that manifestation, that office had yet been given. Make a long story short. Paul baptized them in the name of the Lord Jesus, lays his hands on them, and the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied, and all the men were about 12. Brother Ricky, my friend, is for the Jew, the Gentile, the bond, the free, the male, the female. The Bible said we've been made all to drink. Everyone say drink into one spirit. We need to drink into the Holy Ghost. When you come up here and I'm closing, you pray and you repent, start drinking in the Holy Ghost. You're like a fish. You're drinking in. The Spirit is coming in, and you're drinking yourself to overflowing. And the Holy Ghost is in you, and you're in the Spirit. God bless you this morning. I only need another half hour. Clap your hands unto the Lord. Give him praise, honor, and glory as we change our service this morning. God bless you. In